the dollars that flow they're just evidence of the vibrational currency that you've got going on it's just the next logical step but most people have practiced lack of dollars lack of dollars lack of dollars so they'll allow abundance of vitality or abundance of invigoration or abundance of friendships or abundance of love they'll allow abundance of sunsets they'll get so good that they'll catch every sunset every single time there are so many people that will allow abundance of one thing and another just not abundance of money yet because they've practiced the thought of not enough money so much they've been close on making their payments and worried about money and they've been measuring money with action and how much do you get per hour and what's your salary and what's your talent worth and how much can you perform and why is your performance earn more money than that performance people are all wadded up out here in the manifestations of money and if you would just step back from those manifestations of money and talk about energy which means talk about satisfaction you want to be filthy rich with enthusiasm filthy rich with happiness filthy rich with satisfaction I'm so rich with really good ideas I'm so rich with happiness when I wake up in the morning that's what you've got to be ready for and when you get there so that you feel that way no matter what the state of money is then the state of money must match the state of vibration it's law so it's about really feeling the satisfaction feeling blessed with the idea feeling so blessed that the idea came feeling eager that the idea will flesh out feeling eager that the idea will blossom into something that feels like an action ready to take it must be really annoying to anyone who's ready to jump into action to listen to all of this theoretical conversation about laws of the universe and vortexes that you can't see or hear or smell or taste or touch you've got to find some way that this conversation is satisfying before it can morph into the explosion of what you're talking about what happens to most people is that their vibration matches their state of money because they just keep looking at it and talking about it and measuring it and complaining it and worrying about it and trying to take action and being unproductive in it and eking through it and asking somebody else government give me money mother and dad give me money lawsuit give me money give me this big pile of money and if you don't have a big pile of money you're not ready you're not vibrationally ready for a big pile of money if you don't have a big pile of money if you were ready for a big pile of money you'd have a big pile of money but if you're not ready for a big pile of money you can't let the big pile of money in and we got to tell you there are big piles of money it is raining the world is awash in money you've been hearing about it aren't you just bowled over by how much money some of those people have and how do you feel about them bastards <laughs> why should they have all of that money they should put it in a big pot and we should divvy it all out and if you did it wouldn't take 10 years before the money would be right back where it is you see you got to be ready for money you got to be ready for money which means you got to be happy without it which means you've got to be cashing in your vibrational chips you got to be thankful for this day and thankful for this chair and thankful for this opportunity and thankful for this conversation and thankful for that sunshine and for those highways thankful for this appreciating of that thankful for the quieted mind thankful for the insight thankful for the enthusiasm thankful for the love in my heart thankful for that precious face thankful for this person I've never met in my life and on the elevator had such a nice exchange with not even any words because there was a language barrier but oh my god how good it was to meet you thankful 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 just brings more and more and more and more and more when you are ready to be ready to be ready as you are and we feel that readiness in terms of desire and not much meditation will help you to be really ready in terms of vibration then follow your impulses you see here's the thing and we're happy that you've looped back around here in such a pointed way if you're ready to be ready oh we are so happy to get to say this to you right now to all of you if you're ready to be ready then it's enough for right now and then if you're ready to be ready <clears throat> that too is satisfying and the super rich thing over there isn't even in your mind because that activates a crevasse of lack between what you've got and what you've got so when you're really ready to be ready then you say oh I'm having such satisfying feelings these days oh I feel so good to be alive mm, really good thoughts are coming to me 
And as it gets closer and closer and closer to bursting into where money starts avalanching into your experience, those ideas will feel different than these ready to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready. So it's about really feeling the satisfaction, feeling blessed with the idea, feeling so blessed that the idea came feeling eager that the idea will flesh out feeling eager that the idea will blossom into something that feels like an action ready to take it must be really annoying to anyone who's ready to jump into action to listen to all of this theoretical conversation about laws of the universe and vortexes that you can't see or hear or smell or taste or touch you've got to find some way that this conversation is satisfying before it can morph into the explosion of what you're talking about can you feel that there's a gap that's still there there's an awareness that something hasn't happened that's still dominant and in that wanting to get over that edge there's some dissatisfaction that's keeping you from getting over the edge all right now there's some things to take into consideration because there are a lot of clogged pipes on that subject so there already is quite a bit of momentum on that subject so if we approach it in any normal way we're just going to add to the clogged pipe. You see what we're getting at? So here's a law based fact that if you can hear it, it will serve you in every conversation that you have with yourself in your deliberate creation forevermore. The more general you are when you approach a topic where you know you have clogged pipes, the better off you'll be. Now think about what that means if you don't have any clogged pipes if you're thinking about something wanted then the more specific you are the faster the momentum and the better it is because you're carving out a path of least resistance to something but when you're thinking about something unwanted and adding to what you do not want then the less specific you are the better off you'll be does that make sense to you what's the goal here to find the first pure thought about abundance a pure thought about abundance so just reach for a pure thought about abundance which means try not to have it have any relationship to you if you're not feeling abundant then be good to leave you out of the equation for just a little bit so let's just talk purely about the idea of abundance so we're going to make a statement to you a really to all of you this is another refined point very fine-tuning deliberate creators that we are visiting with here today so how do you feel about the concept of in order to get the results that you want if you've got some clogged pipes just never mind them lay some new pipes doesn't that make perfect sense to you isn't that an easy to understand concept yeah. so now we just want to insert this very important understanding when you're standing in the middle of clogged pipes and you know you are because you feel uncomfortable that's not the time to try to lay new pipes because all you do is increase the clogging of the pipes that already exist so here's a statement that we want you to remember we want you to somehow some way and we'll talk more about that as we're moving forward somehow some way get on this high flying disc it usually happens first thing in the morning before things have come to thwart it sometimes you don't make it to breakfast but first thing in the morning is when you're most likely to feel it and the more you reach for it the more you care about it the more you milk it when you are there the more you will own it the easier it will be the more the momentum will be there the more often you'll be there the easier it'll be to be there so let's say you're there and it doesn't matter if you even know how you got there yesterday I was talking to a friend on the telephone the other day and they got on the subject and they were laughing so hard they were laughing so hard that neither one of them could understand what the other one was saying <laughs> what I can't understand you what I can't understand you and so Esther has decided that she never needs to meditate again she'll just remember that conversation and she goes right to that high-flying disc in other words when you get hold of something that feels like that just milk it and 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 use it for your reason for feeling the way that you're feeling so here's the statement we've been teasing you about it it's time to deliver it to you do all of your laying of new pipes from your high-flying disc all of them from your high-flying disc this is the way that you find clarity this is the way you find abundance you wait until you're in that feeling of high flying abundance and then you can approach the subject that's a little more troubling if you want to understanding that it's risky but it's only 16 seconds of risky right you've got 16 seconds you've got 16 seconds to let it go or to bring it into alignment our favorite story that fits right here we've got to tell it to you now because it means everything sometimes it's like you say to us Abraham I've jumped out of an airplane and I have no parachute what do you suggest that I now do 
and we say hang on it'll be over in a little while <laughs> because there is a momentum that is happening that there is not any action that you're going to be able to offer that's going to make any difference you understand that so what we're saying to you is don't struggle don't fret don't effort just crash and burn it's all right because tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc and after a few days of tomorrow getting up and getting on the high flying disc one day Esther said to us Abraham I refuse to accept that I have to wait until tomorrow to get on the high flying disc I have tools that you've given me I can get back up there any time that I choose to get back up there so what are we talking about we're talking about your conscious awareness of your vibrational output yes we're talking about your conscious awareness that you are vibrational beings yes we're talking about your awareness that you can choose the vibration of your being in this moment but that it takes a little practice yes and some subjects have enough momentum going that it's going to take getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow this could take a while getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow <laughs> But if you get up on enough tomorrows and you reach for that high flying disc and find it then what happens next will be vivid evidence of how you're doing with your high flying disc we so want you to understand that in this day evidence of what disc you're on is going to be all around you Esther said the other day the people around me are making me believe that I might be on the Henri disc <laughs> she resented them <laughs> but she had to accept she had rendezvoused there with them you pick the disc and you'll rendezvous with others who have picked the disc you see and sometimes if you don't realize that you're on it till you're on it there's enough momentum going that it's hard to get off of it but that's the work so here's the rule of thumb that we would follow if we were standing in your physical shoes the better we feel the more we would milk it the worse we feel the more we would try to ignore it that's what Jesus meant when he said turn the other cheek choose your vibration and give it your undivided attention if it feels good and give it as little attention as you can if it doesn't feel good so Esther is thinking the other day about the words that we used and she could feel the poignancy with which we were talking about those clogged pipes in her pond and how they were clogged from neglect and Esther got this visual image of pipes that she's laid to all kinds of things wanted and unwanted and she's got open pipes to unwanted things and open pipes to wanted things and what keeps them open attention to them attention to them keeps them open she's keeping the path of least resistance open to wanted and unwanted things yes but if she neglects them they just clog up from neglect so it's a new even better application of this clogged pipe analogy what paths of least resistance are you carving open every day I hate that guy I've always hated that guy that guy is such a pain the guy dogs me I think he stalks me he's everywhere I go I don't like that guy that person at work is everywhere I go always in my face who's keeping the pipes open that's what we want to ask you you are you're always the one who's keeping the pipes open so if you look around any environment whether it's the environment of your memory whether it's the environment of your work whether it's the environment of your family whether it's the environment of the people that you are moving through the freeways with whatever environment that you're moving around in you are the one who's keeping the pathways open you're the one that gets to the side